so I will talk, I'll be talking today about the PRF security of hash-based uh, message authentication codes. So let me start by explaining the, the problem, uh, saying what MACs are and what, uh, in particular, introducing the three hash-based MACs that we will be interested in, namely NMAC, HMAC, and nested iterate. Uh, then I will recall the well-known notion of a pseudorandom function because we, call, uh, we care about the PRF security of these constructions, and I will summarize existing uh, uh, previous results. And in the second part of the talk, naturally, I will talk about our own, own results in this area, which help us better understand the PRF security of these constructions. Namely, we give an essentially tight bound on the PRF security of these constructions. So let me start by saying what, what a Mac is. It's, uh, it's well known. This, this is a cryptographic primitive that is used for authentic, uh, authenticated mes authenticating messages that are being sent over an insecure channel. So if we have a sender and a receiver, that uh, uh, and the sender wants to send a message uh, over such a channel to the receiver, uh, then he can, sim uh, and if they share, uh, share a symmetric key, then the sender can simply compute a MAC tag uh, on the message using this key and send it along with the message and the receiver, receiver can verify using the same key that the message was not uh, maliciously modified on the way. Uh, there are many ways how to build such, such MACs. And the one that we will focus on is building them from, from hash functions. And if we look one level, level lower, then these hash functions are in turn being built from compression functions like this one, uh, which takes an S, uh, a cbit long state and a bbit long message block and outputs an updated cbit long state. And if we are given such a compression function, we can use it to process uh, messages of uh, length of arbitrary number of blocks in the natural way of cascading, where we simply start from some initialization vector, and we apply the compression function consecutively to each of the blocks, and the last output of the compression function will be the output of the cascade. And in a similar manner, it was uh, proposed by Belare, Canetti, and Kravchik that uh, this can be also used to, to construct a MAC, uh, which they call NMAC or nested MAC, which works as follows. It also processes the message in a cascade-like style, but it doesn't start from an IV. It starts from a, a secret key or a part of the secret key. And at the end, there is another invocation of the compression function f, uh, which, is, uh, which uses a separate part of the key and produces the actual tag of, uh, of the message. And uh, in the same paper, they also uh, propose a practical ver more practical version of, uh, of this construction, which they call HMAC. And uh, it, it differs in two important points. Uh, first of all, the the two keys that are being used by the construction are not independent. They are derived from the same key by XORing, uh, by XORing two constant values, distinct constant values. And second of all, the, the keys are not used uh, in place of the initialization vector. Instead, they are prepended to the messages so that, um, so that existing implementations of hash functions can be used even though they have uh, the IVs hardwired in. Uh, and HMAC has become extremely popular. You can find it in most cryptographic protocols that are being used in, uh, on the internet. And uh, HMAC is being used sometimes in situations where we need more than just a, more than just a MAC, uh, namely a PRF, which is a well-known notion. And I will, I will briefly recall what, the, what it means. But before that, uh, let me mention one last construction that we will be considering. This is the nested iterate construction. Uh, and it, it looks as follows. Uh, it also has a cascade-like structure, but now the compression function uh, has an addic additional dedicated input that is being used for keying. And there is also an outer call to the compression function, which uses a separate key and also processes the message length. So this is the NI construction. And we are interested in the PRF security of these constructions. So what does that mean? Uh, we probably all know that a pseudorandom function is just a keyed function. Uh, that has the property that if it is used under a random and secret key, uh, it looks like a uniformly randomly chosen function. So this is formalized by a distinguisher which interacts with either the function f under a key that is hidden from it or with a randomly chosen function. And the PRF uh, advantage of such a distinguisher against this function f is simply the difference in probabilities that it outputs one in, in the first and in the second experiment. Um, this then allows us to say that f is a PRF uh, with these parameters if uh, for any such distinguisher that runs in time t and asks at most q queries of length uh, at most l blocks, uh, 
uh, the, advantage, the advantage that it achieves is at most epsilon. And in a similar manner, one can also define non-adaptive PRFs by requiring the distinguisher to be non-adaptive, non -adaptive, meaning that the queries it asks, it has to ask all the queries before seeing the answers. And one can also define prefix-free PRFs that uh, where we require the distinguisher to ask only prefix-free que uh, prefix queries. And it is well known that uh, the PRF property is actually stronger than, than, uh, than the MAC, than the property of being a secure MAC. So by investigating the PRF security, we also uh, obtain results for, for MAC security. Uh, let me now summarize what we know or what was known before our work. Uh, in the original paper where NMAC was introduced, it was shown that uh, if NMAC is a, uh, that NMAC itself is a PRF, if the underlying compression function F is a PRF, and if the cascade of this compression function is weakly collision resistant. The actual result in the paper is for the MAC property, but it can be uh, trivially uh, elevated to the PRF property as was observed in subsequent papers. And uh, 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 several years later, it was observed that actually the practical applicability of this result uh, is limited because in practice, uh, these constructions are used with hash functions that, are, uh, that, were, late, that were later found out uh, not to satisfy the second condition, not to be uh, weakly collision resistant. Uh, uh, therefore, to... Uh, to, uh, to re renew our, our trust in, uh, into NMAC, uh, Bellare has revisited this problem 10 years ago, uh, 10 years later, and the result that he, he has shown is that NMAC is actually a secure PRF only under the assumption that the underlying compression function is a secure fixed input length PRF. Uh, a weak point of this, uh, of this uh, result is that the reduction that is being used there is non-uniform. Uh, which means that if we want to derive some result for the security of NMAC, we have to plug in an assumption on the non-uniform security of F. And it has been known for some time that this is much weaker than one, uh, we would reasonably hope for for uh, existing uh, candidates for compression functions. And uh, this is, issue was brought up in the context of HMAC also by Koblitz and Menezes. Uh, let me point out at this point that uh, there is a recent update to the Bellara 06 paper at ePrint. Uh, which observes that the reduction could also be made uniform uh, at, at the cost of worse bounds. And one last result that I want to mention before getting to our own contributions uh, is uh, a reduction of security of HMAC to the security of NMAC, which is also due to Mihir Bellare, uh, and which shows that, uh, that the PRF of security translates uh, as long as uh, two additional assumptions are satisfied. First, that uh, the compression function is a dual PRF, which means that it acts as a, P, uh, a, as a PRF even if it's keyed via the, the upper input here. And second, if the compression function is secure under some particular related key attacks, which are, uh, this assumption is necessary because as we have seen, the keys are not independent uh, in HMAC. And this allows uh, us to focus on investigating the PRF security of NMAC and uh, we can obtain also results for HMAC via this uh, standard reduction thanks, uh, thanks to the result by Bellare. So, so much for the, for the existing results and uh, the question that we are investigating and let me now move to, to our own results and I will start with, with NMAC. Our first result shows that the, uh, under the assumption that the compression function F is an epsilon secure PRF and the delta non-adaptively secure PRF, uh, the construction NMAC is an epsilon plus LQ delta uh, secure PRF for Q queries uh, of length at most L. Uh, where these reductions uh, or time overhead is, uh, is the best one can hope for in this setting, and this reduction is uh, completely uniform, and it improves on previous bounds, and uh, as we will discuss later, it is essentially tight. Uh, note that uh, similar but less fine-grained bound of uh, uh, LQ epsilon was uh, independently obtained by Koblitz and Menezes. So let me, let me briefly show you how our reduction works. So it, it works in two, two main steps. We first reduce the PRF security of NMAC uh, to uh, the non-adaptive and prefix-free PRF security of the cascade construction that we have seen before. And then in the second step, we reduce this in turn to the non-adaptive PRF security of the underlying compression function F. Uh, the second step uh, uses an approach uh, 
from uh, another paper by Belara, Canetti, and Kravchik from, the 90s, from 1996, and adapts this, this approach to the non-adaptive setting that, uh, that we need. Uh, and I will not talk about this part. Instead, I will quickly sketch how the first part of the reduction works. So when we start from the NMAC, uh, NMAC construction, the first step that we do is we replace the outer call to the compression function by an ideal random function R. This introduces the, the term epsilon into the security bound. Uh, then we actually switch from distinguishing to, uh, uh, to an adversary that is trying to violate the condition. And this condition is that at this point, at the output of the cascade, there is no collision for two distinct messages being processed. And uh, we observe that uh, as, long as, as, as long as this condition is satisfied, it's not violated, uh, the construction behaves exactly as a random function. And therefore, we can just upper bound the probability of this co uh, condition being violated. And this also upper bounds the distinguishing advantage. Uh, not, but now we can move to non-adaptive uh, distinguishers because uh, the outputs of this construction can be easily simulated as long as the collision has not occurred. And we can also uh, leave out the last step and switch to the cascade because this doesn't uh, affect the success probability of a non-adaptive distinguisher in violating this condition. Uh, then we can switch to a prefix-free uh, adversary uh, by simply appending the same fresh block to each of the messages, uh, thus making the messages prefix-free. And finally, we can sw switch back from uh, an adversary trying to violate this condition to a distinguisher by considering a distinguisher that outputs one if and only if a collision occurs. And by this sequence of steps, we move from the, from the setting where an arbitrary distinguisher interacts with NMAC to a setting where a much more restricted, prefix-free, and non-adaptive distinguisher interacts with the cascade construction. And this is the first step of the reduction that I promised to show you. So after we have established this result, uh, a natural question is whether, whether uh, whether the bound is actually tight. Uh, and we show that uh, this is to some extent true. We show that uh, the L LQ delta term in the bound is necessary. And so for the most likely case where this is the dominating term, uh, our bound is tight. And we show this by an attack uh, for a particular compression function f. And the f that we consider uh, looks as follows. Uh, uh, it has a delta fraction of uh, so-called weak keys, including the zero bit string. and if it is queried on, under such a weak key, uh, it only outputs a, a constant zero bit string, no matter what was the input. Uh, but otherwise, for other keys, it behaves as a good PRF. And one can show that this f uh, is a delta non-adaptively secure PRF. But nonetheless, uh, if we build uh, NMAC based on this compression function f, uh, there is an attack against uh, this NMAC construction that uh, achieves advantage uh, of the order LQ delta. And the attack is, is uh, actually very simple, and it works as follows. Uh, the distinguisher simply queries two messages that have a long common prefix, as you can see, uh, but they differ in the last block. And uh, if it happens that during the processing of, uh, of this long common prefix, a uh, weak key happens to be an intermediate state uh, in the processing of the cascade, then the zero bit string actually propagates in both of the case, uh, in both cases uh, until the end of the cascade, which makes uh, the two last differing blocks not to make any difference and to produce the same tag. And this happens with probability roughly L times delta. Uh, and hence, if the distinguisher tries roughly Q such pairs of messages, uh, the advantage that it achieves is roughly LQ times delta, uh, which shows that, that this term is necessary in the, in the bound. Uh, so this is what I wanted to say about NMAC, and let me quick, quickly move to the NI construction, where our second result says that uh, the compression function, that if we assume that the compression function H is an epsilon secure PRF, then uh, the NI construction uh, is an epsilon plus LQ squared over two to the C uh, secure PRF. And for completeness, we also consider a variant of this construction where this uh, message length is replaced only by a zero bit string. And for this variant, we also prove a similar bound. Uh, our analysis is uh, mostly information theoretic, and we also argue in the paper that it is tight. Uh, I will briefly sketch how it works. Since, since the compression functions are uh, keyed by, a, by an additional uh, input, we can start the analysis by replacing the PR, uh, PRFs by ideal random functions. And this allows us to proceed uh, 
by an information theoretic analysis. We again introduce this uh, collision condition, and then we use a combinatorial approach to upper bound the probability of such, uh, such a collision being violated, such a condition being violated. Uh, namely, we reduce it to a counting problem for some objects, and then we count these objects, which also gives us uh, an upper bound on the collision probability. And the objects that we will be counting are called structure graphs, and they basically represent a possible evaluation of the whole cascade on a pair of messages, M1 and M2. So uh, in such a way that uh, the vertices correspond to, to the states of the cascade after processing individual blocks of the messages, and equal uh, vertices corresponding to equal states are, are merged into one vertex. And so here, you, here we can see an example of such a structure graph for two four-block messages that are equal on the third block. We can see that since the first blocks are not equal, we end up in different state after processing them. Then the second, uh, second blocks are also not equal, but a collision occurs, and therefore we end up in the same state. Since the third blocks are the same, we again end up in the same state after processing them. And the fourth blocks are again not equal, but uh, thanks to a collision, it might happen that we end up uh, in the same state also after processing the whole messages. And uh, one can show that uh, any such structure graph containing Z internal collisions, so here we had two, uh, occurs with a probability at most two to the minus z times c, uh, which means that we can safely ignore uh, graphs with two or more collisions because they are just uh, extremely unlikely. And that means that if we actually want to upper bound uh, the probability of a collision uh, at the output of the cascade, uh, we can just uh, count the number of graphs that contain at most one collision and uh, they, uh, where the path for M1 and M2 end up in the same vertex because that means that there is a collision at the output of the cascade. Uh, and since we know that every such graph appears only with probability two to the minus C, by upper bounding the number of the graphs, we actually also upper bound the probability of the collision. And we do such a counting in the paper. We, we give two results for both the case where the messages have the same length and for uh, the case where they might differ in their length. And this corresponds to the two bounds for, uh, for, the, NI construct, for the two variants of the NI construction. So I will not go into more details. If you are interested in this technical aspect, just look into the paper. And let me just finish by summarizing our contributions. So we have proven that uh, NMAC is an epsilon plus LQ delta secure PRF if the underlying compression function F is epsilon secure and delta non-adaptively secure. We proved this by a uniform reduction and we showed that this is tied for the case where LQ delta is the dominating factor, the dominating term. Uh, this can be translate, translated also into results for HMAC uh, via the, the standard uh, reduction due to Bellare. And uh, finally, we also give a um, uh, tight information theoretic analysis of the NI construction nested iterate of two variants of it. So I would leave you with this. Thank you for your attention. And I'm happy to answer any questions.